What's going on, Garage Gang? Matt from Garage MC here. Guys, we're gonna do a little update video and some build plans. Yeah, this is a 1985 ATC 250R frame. <sighs> I think we, uh, I think we need to talk about a few things here. Stay tuned. New year. Got a lot of big plans, man. We're going to do a little update in here. I want to spark a little conversation with you guys. So pl please jump down in the comments. But yeah, before you even do that, smash the like button now, guys. Because what we're going to talk about in this video, if you don't like this, you should probably go to like watching arts and crafts videos or something. Because this is, uh, is going to be a big undertaking here. And, uh, you know... I have a pretty serious deadline here. I need this to be done by July because I would like to unveil or debut this at Preston Frazier's event. Uh, if you guys don't know who Preston Frazier is, pick that rock up off yourself and type in this old trike on YouTube. Check it out. Anyway, let's talk about this and then we'll get into some updates. Um, I got updates on the 465 for you. Uh, obviously, this hybrid build that we're going to talk about in this one, another hybrid build, and I got some plans of making some stuff out of some composite materials. Never done that before other than a couple small things, but yeah, it's going to be a big learning curve for me. A um, little scary because it's not cheap, and the likelihood of messing it up a few times is pretty, pretty great, so, you know, but don't you worry, man. We're going to figure it out. We're going to get that stuff anyway. Let's get into talking about this. All right, guys, so I've kind of been on the hunt for a, you know, 85. I'd like to have an 86 Honda 350X ATC. Um, so I will find one, but in the meantime, you guys know I'm a 250R lover, and I'm a big bore lover. Um, I like two strokes and four strokes, you know, two strokes mainly, but four strokes with a lot of power are very fun too. They all have their own purpose in life, for me anyway. I like all brands. Uh, I'm not a big Yamaha fan, but, you know, we'll, we'll save that for another video. But anyway, you guys know I'm a Honda guy, so, yeah, I uh, was talking to Preston about this from this old trike, and he sent me a picture of one of his buddy's three-wheelers. I'm going to go ahead and overlay a picture here. Yeah, that's uh, the, the gist of what I'm aiming for here, so... Let's, uh, let's get into this, and then we'll talk about the 465, and then we'll talk about the other hybrid build that I also want to do. It's kind of just going to be like a for fun type of thing, so because this uh, this build here is going to take going to take a while. It's a lot of work, it's a lot of money, and the other one that I also want to build, I already have all the stuff for it, and you know none of the parts are like really worth a whole crazy amount of money. So you know that'll be just like for fun and to fill in time in between videos on this serious build here so like i already said let's get into this and look at this real quick guys all right so i jumped ahead a little bit jumped ahead a little bit and uh <laughs> i laid some stuff out man it doesn't it doesn't look that bad it really doesn't look that bad guys um that picture that i showed you before of preston's buddies uh here i'll show it to you again while i'm talking if you guys look down towards the front of the frame, down towards the front of the engine at the bottom, it looks like he had to uh, move the, the the lower frame rails and everything to clean clear like the bottom of the engine and everything. I don't know what year engine he used, but here I'll just show you what I got going on, man. It doesn't it doesn't look that far off? All right, so guys, this is a 2006 to 2014 Honda TRX 450 ER engine yes i have the whole thing i have the wire harness the cdi everything to make it run basically i can make it run on the bench so you know just to let you know but this is i got the pivot bolt through so <clears throat> my plans are this pivot bolt here if you know you get into looking at lengths of pivot bolts and what works what what 400x 250r 450r all really the same pivot ball. I think the 450R one has like the setter is like machined down a little bit, but it, you know, same thing. They all work with each other. So that gives me my width with that anyway. 
um, to align the sprockets and everything, I'm going to use a whole 450R rear section with the 450R spacers and everything in it. This way, the sprockets will line up dead straight. Um, the 450R swing arm is like half the weight of a stock steel swing arm for a 250R or, you know, like my 465 swing arm. That thing's like 16 friggin' pounds. Uh, stock 400DX one is like 7 or 8 pounds, I forget. Anyway, so <clears throat> when this trike is sitting on wheels and on suspension, all right, this lower frame rail should be level with the ground. So also what should be level with the, with the frame rail and the ground should be the logo, the Honda logo. So that'll give me a good base where to start. So what I had done was I took a level and I, you know, measured where it's at and the angle it's at now. And then I put the level at level. I pivoted off this very corner of the A here and it was only like an eighth of an inch. So where am I going to get the eighth of an inch from? The OEM stock 250R lower motor mount bolt, which I'd have to move anyway to catch this one. Go ahead and cut that off. There's plenty of room to drop this down. I'll have to make custom brackets to catch the uh, the front motor mount bolt. But, I mean, I, I really, really don't think it's going to be an issue, guys. I really don't think it's going to be as much of a task as I think it is. Um... Preston's body strike, like I said, it looks like these tubes are totally different. Um, like he cut these off, like back to here, and then welded in other ones. I'd like to leave the structural integrity of this frame the way it is from Honda. Um, I didn't put the top end on yet to, to see like where we land up here. I'm sure this might have to be notched out and modified. All these do here, these are what catch the, uh, the 250R gas tank with the lower mount there. Um, and then you got radiator brackets and stuff that go up here. So liquid cooled engine, um, the 0405 one, they have an oil cooler line. They got rid of that for 06 to 14. So I don't have to worry about an oil tank or any of that stuff. So once I get the top end on and see where this is at, and you know, we're not doing any of that in this guys, this is just an update. And I want to see what you guys think about what I'm about to do here. If any of you guys think this is sacrilegious to cut up a 250R ATC frame. Uh, one, it's an 85. They made a ton of them. Um, they're not as sought after as the 86 ATC 250R. Uh, two, I have like, I don't know, seven of these. Um, I have the whole 85 forks. I got a whole 85 rear, which I'm, like I said, not going to use. Um, so it'll get a stock, you know, 250R gas tank. Well, stock. I'm not going to tell you guys what I'm planning for the plastics here. I'm not going to tell you guys. It's going to be very custom. If you guys are paying attention, you probably already know what I'm talking about, but you know, that's where the other hybrid build that I'm talking about is going to come into play. So I think we're in good shape here, guys. Liquid cooled engine. Obviously I have radiators on either side. Um, that Tusk radiator fan, like I said, being I'm swapping out to different fans for the 465, if you watch the other video, that'll go right on here this already has the thermostat and everything so i'll just have to wire the factory wiring into that aftermarket fan uh so anyway yeah that's what th this is my extremely ambitious plan here guys so all right on to the next thing let's talk 465 ex updates man guys i this quad here i i am so sick of dealing with the little stuff with this and it's not really it doesn't sound like a big deal because i've overcome a bunch of hurdles with this thing so far so now the next problem here, I went to put the CFM oil tank in. I dressed it out with all the new Honda fittings and everything. So here's the problem I'm having with this. These XFR Nerf bars, well, when they designed those, they designed them for a quad with a stock oil tank. CFM oil tank, they designed that for a quad that doesn't have Nerf bars shooting through the frame there. Um, no fault of CFM or XFR. They had no idea that some weirdo like me is going to be doing shit like this to a 400X. But, yeah, you see where the bolt hole here, where it goes? Yeah, it's like, uh, it's not much. It's like a quarter inch off. You know, so the tank is lifted up a little bit because it's sitting on top of the Nerf bars. So, these Nerf bars are all the way down to the frame, just about. So, what I'm going to do here, guys, I, I had two options. One, one of my friends was like, yeah, just, you know, put a pipe on the bottom of the oil tank and beat a dent into it. Yeah, no. Obviously, you, we're friends, but you must not know me that well. I don't do shit like that. 
option, well, I'm not even gonna call that an option. So option one would be to take an aluminum tube, cut the tank, and then weld a half moon tube into the tank. Not liking that idea. These are pressure tested from CFM. I do not wanna mess with their design at all. Um, option two, which is probably what I'm gonna go with, guys. I'm gonna put the oil tank in and get it to where it's gonna be sitting relatively. And I'm going to cut into the Nerf bars on both sides. So basically the tube will get, you know, a, a cut. I'll cut it like from a round part to a flat on the top. So it'll be a half circle. And then I'll just replate both halves with an aluminum plate. Um, I'm not just going to cut it and leave it open. That's, you know, just goes back to beating it with a hammer. I'm not going to do stuff like half-ass like that. So that's the problem I'm running into, into now. So I got my buddy that is my aluminum welder. He's going to stop by and help me with that. And he's also going to take a look at this with me. So there's your update on the 465. Um, I ordered my new plastics for it because I ain't running those black mares. I just didn't like the way they looked, man. You know, I, I like the black plastics on it with the red center, but we're going a different route. So, you know, you guys will see that when we get back into this. I need to get this done too. And a lot of you guys have been asking me, yo, where can I get a ticket to win, to possibly win the TRX 465EX, the waffle, raffle, waffle, whatever the hell you want to say legally. Uh, guys, I got to get a permit to, or a license to do a game of chance thing, to do it legally anyway, because you already know so there's going to be somebody that bought one ticket and didn't win, and he's going to be mad, and next thing you know, the IRS is going to be knocking on my door and all kinds of stuff, and I ain't got time for that shit, so, uh, but if you are interested, drop a comment, let me know, um, there'll be 200 spots, it's $100 per ticket. Any of you guys that are really good at math go, damn, that's 20 grand. You're going to get 20 grand for a 400X? Yeah. If you guys have been following the channel, uh, I'll be losing money at that. Even if it sells out completely, uh, I'll still be losing money. And that's going to include shipping it and a second and third place winner. So, you know, it, it, you know if you got a problem with that, it, it just ain't for you. That's all it is. You know, if you don't want to play, you don't want to play. No big deal. But also, you got to pay to play. Just like I had to pay for all this shit. And that's not even count my labor, guys. But you guys, you, you already know what's going on with that thing. So let me uh, let me pull out hybrid project build number two, and we'll talk about that real quick. Cause I posted a community post with a picture. Well, no, I didn't post a community post in the last video. I gave you a little little sneak peek at what I was looking at. Only one of you guys guessed every single part that I had there. So let me grab that stuff out and let's talk about that now. All right, guys, so hybrid build number two. Only one of you guys guessed, uh, like, you were 90% right, my boy Jake. Um, yeah, so this is a Yamaha Blaster chassis. It's a drum brake style frame. Uh, there are quite a few, you know, differences between the 01 and older with the drum brakes and the, you know, 0, what, 02 to 06, I think, for blasters, or 05. I, I don't know, man um with hydraulic brakes so mainly the differences are you know where the rear master cylinder goes over there there's no brackets to mount any of that or you know nothing on the older frames uh the front you could probably do if you changed out the hubs and everything but you know none of that's even gonna matter here so right off the bat guys same thing like i said about the three-wheeler project so we're gonna use a 400 ex engine in this um, I'm going to use a 400EX swing arm. This way the sprockets are lined up, everything. The rear swing arm, guys, I literally have to shave off a sixteenth of an inch on each side of the swing arm, and it fits right in there. Uh, what would fit directly in this frame, which I don't think anybody's ever checked this out before, but a Raptor 660 aluminum frame has the exact same spacing where the pivot bolt goes through as a blaster. Here, if you don't believe me, let me show you. So... All right, so that's the bottom side of the blaster swing arm. So here's the bottom side of a Raptor 660 swing arm. Check that out, man. They are identical. It's the same shit, like width-wise. I don't know the weight differences. I didn't bother weighing them. Uh, I'm not going to use either of these. Both are for sale. Let me know. Raptor 660 swing arm, 150 bucks. Uh, I think my boy Robert wants it, though, so you guys might already been beat to the punch. So, all right, so that takes care of the engine and the swing arm. 
factory plastics, factory gas tank, the 400X engine. However, I'm going to need to remove this down tube and change the angle of it a little bit because the 400X engine is like, it was either 14 or 16 inches, which comes to about here. So, you know, I guess I could cut it here and then bend this down or something like that and do some gussets. I don't know, we'll figure that out when we get into it. Like I said, this one's just for fun, guys. But the main part of doing this, the plastics. Uh, they're not gonna be plastics anymore. So I gotta get my bearings with making this stuff out of carbon fiber. The, the gas tank cover, the front grill, the front fenders, the rear fender, because Yep, you, you, you guessed it. That's gonna be, obviously, I guess the biggest problem here doing this is making carbon fiber fenders. So, you know, like I said, that stuff's expensive. So I wanna get my practice in with some small parts with this. I'm probably gonna do a video making that out of carbon fiber. So be on the lookout for that, guys. I gotta get some more materials because I bought all the materials like two years ago and shelf life on those, you know, isn't made for Matt from Garage MC shelf life. All right, so now let's get into the fun part about this, guys. What am I doing with the front end? So for the front end of this, guys, you guys remember my 2013 Raptor 700 that got stolen? Yeah, remember all the upgrades I just did to it? Like, so the thief could enjoy a brand new quad from me for free? Um, take off A-arms, Raptor 700 A-arms. You know, uh, yeah, that might not really work. Guess what? It's gonna work. So, here's the upper A-arm, guys. So, use your imagination here, guys. Put your uh, thinking cap on, all right? So, see these two brackets up here? Same thing as the Raptor. It gets one bolt through the top A-arm, and then the bottom is separate. So, the top A-arm, uh, what I'm going to do is I have, I, I don't know why, but I have like 10 of these frames here. So, I'm going to cut a bracket off of another frame, just like this. I'm going to put a long dowel through this. This way I can keep the, the holes perfectly lined up. And then I'll take the third bracket and mount it to where it needs to go. Weld that in, then get rid of this one because, and yes, I will keep the factory dust caps involved. You can see where we're at there. Not too bad, not too hard to do. So the bottom A arms. Same thing, guys. Same thing. I'm going to have to take the tack welds off of this from the factory. And yes, I'm going to gusset this frame because, you know, blasters, they're, they're very weak right here. You ever hit something with the A-arm? This section, you know, if you hit it with the right side, this side will tweak and twist the frame. I, I have one in the backyard I'd show you, but it's covered in snow. And I think you guys are smart enough to understand what I'm saying here. So I'll have to move this bracket back just to line up with that which is not that far off either. So I'll be leaving the front A-arm bracket on top and bottom where they go, and then leaving that one and building it and moving it from the rear leaves our shock mount exactly where it needs to go to line up with the A-arms. Any of you guys that don't know, the Raptor 700 A-arms are identical, like 90% identical to a carbureted, mile y carbureted model YFZ uh, set of A-arms, so at least factory anyway. So your Raptor 700 A-arms, you could bolt onto your uh, YFZ carbureted model if you have one. Uh, so that's pretty much it with that, guys. Sounds like a lot, but it's really not that bad, man. Biggest deal is going to be moving that, that tube and the two brackets back. The rest of it's just putting it all together. Um, it, it's going to be fun, guys, because this is going to be a short wheelbase quad. You know, we're going to lose a little weight with the aluminum swing arm over the factory steel one. Yeah, the engine weighs like, I think the bottom end of a 400EX non-reverse model is like 62 pounds. And then the top end is like another 8, 9, 10 pounds. So we're going to gain a little weight with the engine. But, you know, it's going to be a real fun quad, man. It'll be like, I think a stock blaster, 17 horsepower. So... We're going to be almost doubling it with a stock 400EX engine. And then you already know, we could go, you know, 426, 416, whatever from there after we get it built, obviously. So there's your update and plans with that, which, you know, correlates with what I'm doing here. So other updates for the years, for the year, guys. Um, what else we got going on here? 
my Suzuki 1991 LT250R. I was uh, messing around, looking around at it and everything like that. I have like 88 or 89 graphics on it because when I first got the quad, I just ordered the first set of graphics I found. So my quad is a 91. So I want to make it look like a 91. So what I had just got from Bruce over at Blue Line Graphics. Oh, look at that. It falls out perfectly. Not sponsored, guys. At all. <laughs> um, 91 graphics from Blue Line Graphics. You guys don't know Bruce from Blue Line. He goes to extreme lengths to get the proper size, uh, spacing, coloring, everything. So, like, they are the best repop graphics OEM that you could possibly find. Um, I, I don't even bother looking at other companies because Bruce is, like, on point, man. On point with that stuff. Uh, would love to have a sponsorship, but, you know... These are these are so cheap, guys. It's like it's not even worth my time trying to send them an email and and, and beg for a bowl of gruel. Sir, I want some more. Um. Anyway, so yeah, that's with that. The seat cover on my '91 LT 250R. It's got some stupid enjoy seat cover. They work good. Not saying anything bad about them, but I want my quad to look OEM body wise. Anyway. So the 91 came with the camo print seat. Guys, the camo print seat is still on my quad under that Enjoy seat cover. And I kind of like, you know, felt around on it. And, you know, you, you know, you can like move the seat cover around. It feels like it's in really good shape under there. And if it's not, I could just put the seat cover back on. Probably won't. I'll probably order one from 4Works if the, the OEM seat cover is in bad shape underneath there. But if it's not ripped or... You know, it has a hole in it, like where they get up by the corners, like, you know, up here on an older quad because the, the sun kind of shrinks them and, you know, they get stretched out and stuff like that. So if, if it's not good, I'll probably do a four works and set it up kind of like a custom looking style. But, you know, so that's it with that. Other Suzuki updates. Uh, I'm in the middle of filming a three part series rebuilding MRC builds. Uh, he's got an 88 bottom end with an 87 top end, so, you know, it's an 87 to 92 engine. Um, the only difference with the top end is the 87 has a larger reed cage than 88 and up. They went from a 5 bolt in 87 to a 6 bolt, 88 to 92. Bigger reed cage, same, same reed cage opening as a, uh, 87 Quadzilla, which is kind of cool. So, um, I'm in the middle of taking care of that. His right side engine case, the threads for the drain bolt are really messed up, so I'm in the process of taking care of that. The other half of the engine is already put together. Everything, Most of the parts are all recoated re with Suzuki Blue. I still have to do a cylinder, and then I can start putting that together after I get the right side case back. So um, I also went with a plan B. I bought another right side case that I found on eBay. It was in perfect shape, just in case that repair on the drain bolt doesn't work out. I'll just keep his right side case half and hang it on the wall or something, and he'll get the one that I purchased, and, you know, because, because you know, I want him to have a good product. So if you guys don't know who MRC Builds is, check out his channel too, man. Um, yeah, so, all right, one more thing to talk about, and then I'll peace you guys out, and I'll start making the next video. So last update, guys, today is uh, January 21st. It's Sunday today which I'm going to go in and edit and get this video out to you guys tonight. Uh, this Wednesday on Quad Talk Live, guys, every Wednesday night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Quad Talk Live, dual live stream, so me and another YouTuber. So we started out, we had Justin Carl Films on the first one, then we had Tyler McNabb on the second, then we had John, a.k.a. <laughs> AKA Fred from Odd One Wheel 7, um, then we had... MRC Builds, we had Preston Frazier, last Wednesday we had Nick from West Michigan Motorsports, this Wednesday guys, being we're talking about this 250R, 450R hybrid, or like I'm going to call it in my head the 450X, ATC Honda 450X, so extremely big bore 350X, kinda, I guess, I don't know if I could take the liberties and saying something like that, but I just did, so, huh. <laughs> um, this Wednesday, guys, uh, let's see here, today's the 21st, so 22, 23, the 24th of this month, I, th I think I just did that right, right, yeah, 
Anyway, this Wednesday, coming up, 8.30 at night, guys, Eastern Standard Time, we're going to have Lou Batello uh, as our guest. He uh, runs a Facebook group called 350X, King of the Hill, Buy, Sell, and Trade. Something along them lines. I can never remember the name of it, but you get the gist of what I'm saying. Uh, it's a great Facebook group. He's also starting a YouTube channel, so be on the lookout for that. So anyway, guys, I hope... Uh, I hope you guys spark a little conversation down there in the comments section, man. Let me know what you guys think about this. Let me know if you're as excited about it as I am. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Uh, we're about to end this video, so if you have not yet, smash that like button, guys. It helps out huge. Um, really appreciate that if you do. And if you're not subscribed yet, you might want to subscribe because you're not going to want to miss this, man. You know, if you're as excited about stuff like this and you like riding, you like Hondas and three-wheelers and quads and everything like that guys there's so much more to come you have no idea no idea this is just the plans for this year yeah, so far i'm sure there'll be more stuff to come but anyway thank you guys for watching thanks for joining me in the garage this today and uh i'll see you guys in the garage next time peace stickers are flying off the shelf too guys three inch in diameter one for five three for twelve and that includes shipping Go ahead and drop a comment or hit me up on Facebook, man, if you guys are interested. Really appreciate the support. So let's go ahead and end this like this old trike does. And we'll come in for the close-up. And start fading to black.